feet of curtains held up by 20 posts fitted into bronze bases with silver hooks and rods. The curtains on the west end of the courtyard will be 75 feet long, supported by 10 posts set into 10 bases. The east end will also be 75 feet long. The courtyard entrance will be on the east end, flanked by two curtains. The curtain on the right side will be 22 and a half feet long, supported by three posts set into three bases. The curtain on the left side will also be 22 and a half feet long, supported by three posts set into three bases. For the entrance to the courtyard, make a curtain that is 30 feet long. Fashion it from fine linen and decorate it with beautiful embroidery in blue, purple, and scarlet yarn. It will be attached to four posts that fit into four bases. All the posts around the courtyard must be connected by silver rods using silver hooks. The posts are to be set in solid bronze bases. So the entire courtyard will be 150 feet long and 75 feet wide, with curtain walls seven and a half feet high made from fine linen. The bases supporting its walls will be made of bronze. All the articles used in the work of the tabernacle, including all the tent pegs used to support the tabernacle and the courtyard curtains, must be made of bronze. Tell the people of Israel to bring you pure olive oil for the lampstand, so it can be kept burning continually. The lampstand will be placed outside the inner curtain of the Most Holy Place in the tabernacle. Aaron and his sons will keep the lamps burning in the Lord's presence day and night. This is a permanent law for the people of Israel, and it must be kept by all future generations. Brother Aaron and his sons, Nadab, Abihu, Eleazar, and Ithamar, will be set apart from the common people. They will be my priests and will minister to me. We can fast forward from there. How important is the theme in the Bible regarding tabernacle? Kaano po ka importansya ang Bible? The tabernacle was taught or described for 50 chapters in the scriptures. That's how important. We learn of the creation story in one or two chapters in the book of Genesis, right? I think uh, some people call uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 13 the love chapter. Some people would label uh, Hebrews chapter 11 the heroes of faith and so on and so forth. People or Bible students have their favorite names for each chapter you know how long the lesson on tabernacle how expansive the lesson on the tabernacle is 50 chapters 13 chapters in the book of exodus 18 chapters in the book of leviticus 13 chapters in the book of numbers two chapters in deuteronomy and up to the book of hebrews four chapters there must be something when the lord uh, say something in a sentence or in a word. There must be something when the Lord repeats words. Where there's, there's must be, there must be something if uh, 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 the Bible could use two or three chapters to communicate a theme or a message. But my dear friends, there is really something very, very important when the Bible uses 50 chapters to communicate one thing and it took the tabernacle 50 chapters in the scriptures how important is that very very important how important is that in our lesson very very foundational for 744 years my, my, my mind is filled with numbers all week now I have to memorize this you know seven centuries and more later we see this guy named David David is as you know a king and in the book of uh, beautiful stories of his uh, bravery and warfare very storied life but in the book of 
Second Samuel 24, an interesting story went on like this. <coughs> he commanded his general, Joab, to number, out of pleasure and out of pride, to number his army. He's been winning battles after battles. One day, he approached his general, his name is Joab, sabi niya, you know what? Let's, let's count our armies because mahirap na, maraming gera ngayon, just to be sure. Before that, he would just go to war and win because the Lord is with him and he trusts the Lord and God anointed him to win battles after battles. This good general of David asked him, Lord, why do we need to even count our armies? But nonetheless, David commanded, mm -hmm. King David commanded him, you know, just count it anyway. We need to know, and I would like to know, because just to be sure. They counted 800,000 for Israel and Judah, they have 500,000. So they have a lot. But you know what? David became guilty because he knew what he was doing was wrong. Okay? <clears throat> and the Lord spoke to him through a prophet named Gad, G-A-D. Ang sabi, okay, God is gonna punish you for that pride. Okay? He's gonna give you days of famine or the Lord, uh, you, you pick. Okay? You pick. Either months of famine or months that your enemies are gonna chase after you. Okay, three months, you're on the running. Or um, three days of play. Pinapili po siya nung uh, prophet. Okay, I'm going somewhere. If you think this is disconnected, I'm going somewhere with this. So stay with me. David said, you know what? I'd rather fall in the hands of God rather than fall in the hands of man. Okay? So let God punish me with plagues. So what happened? 70 <coughs> people died. 70 of, his, of David's army died. And it was just a horrendous sight, if you could imagine. And um, I think it was David himself who wrote Psalm 20 verse 7. Some trust in chariots, some trust in horses, but we will remember the name of our God. What God was teaching him, David, I've been with you, you trusted me, you placed your trust on my power, I will take care of your enemies for you, you don't need to be insecure and proud about it, that you have lots of armies, so I'm punishing you, and you requested three days of plagues, so there you have it, 70 of your trusted men, faithful army, died. <coughs> on the spot because of the plagues remember the story but this is the first time in the same chapter David repented and as a display of his repentance he went into a place called a dressing floor parang a, a, a farm a dressing floor I think it's like uh, 37 uh, acres of land is called around us threshing floor are you still with me I hope so I think so and David offered an altar and praise to God on this threshing floor okay he worshiped God as a display of his repentance he worshiped God and David offered to buy this dressing floor, this farmland, on top of a hill. Ang sabi nung uh, owner, no, it's okay, you can have it You can have it for free. I'm just gonna donate it to you. Sabi ni King David, no, no, no. If it's of value to God, if it's of importance, <clears throat> it has value, so let me pay for it. And David purchased this place. Okay? What? does it have to do 
with our lesson today. That place, that around a stressing floor, is a location of the Temple Mount. How many have you been uh, to this place? Some of you, one of you? Okay, Temple Mount. You know the Temple Mount, right? In Jerusalem. It's also the place where Mount Moriah was. Where Abraham offered Isaac. Very, very important for the Jewish people. Tung location na tong. First, it was a place where David, uh, you know, offered his repentance and worship to God. Uh, centuries later, it became the Temple Mount. During those times, before that, it was Abraham, a spot that was very, very holy for the Jews because it was where Abraham offered Isaac. And it was the place and time where the angel of the Lord <coughs> stopped Abraham and he, Abraham exercised his faith to kill his son but a ram showed up as a substitute very very interesting fascinating story some people believe it's also where the Garden of Eden was located it's the place where we could find in the scriptures the place where the first temple was. And then, the second temple was located. And most probably, the third temple will also be there. So here you have it. May I submit to you six or seven important events on that threshing floor. Where David repented and offered his worship unto God. Then David said, This is the house of the Lord, of, uh, Lord God, and this is the altar of burnt offering for Israel. So David commanded to gather the aliens who were in the land of Israel, and he appointed masons to cut hewn stones to build the house of God and David prepared iron in abundance for the nails to the doors and gates and for the joints and bronze in abundance beyond measure and cedar trees in abundance for the Sidoans, Sidonians and those from Tar brought much cedar wood to David now David said Solomon my son is young and inexperienced and the house to be built for the Lord must be exceedingly magnificent Famous and glorious throughout all countries. I will now make preparation for it. So David made abundant preparations before his death. Okay. Verse 6. 1 Chronicles 22. Then he called for his son Solomon and charged him to build a house for the Lord God of Israel. And David said to Solomon, My son, as for me, it was in my mind to build a house to the name of the Lord my God. But the word of the Lord came to me saying, You have shed much blood and have made great wars. You shall not build a house for my name because you have shed much blood on earth in my sight. Behold, a son will be born to you who shall be a man of peace or a man of rest. And I will give him a rest from all his enemies all around. His name shall be Solomon, and I will, for I will give peace and quietness to Israel in his days. You see, David was a man of war. His son Solomon was the man of peace. Kaya nga, shalom, peace. Solomon, that's where the word came from. He shall build a house for my name, and he will be my son, and I will be his father, and I will establish the throne of his kingdom over Israel forever. So, David was disallowed by God to build the first temple, but rather, it was relegated to his son mm. Solomon. What reason? Because he was a man of war, through his hands a lot of blood was shed in the many battles that he undergo, uh, underwent. And now Solomon, during peacetime all over Israel, is the one who was entrusted 